Hello again. You find me, so say, in my favourite place, next to old Thumper here. No, the engine. I'm talking about. Yeah, he's not talking about me. <laughs> well, he better not be. Well, she has done in the past. Uh, this morning I've got to do a. It might not be morning for you. I realise that. I've got to do an oil change. It is slightly overdue. Um, I've been doing other things, as some of you may have seen. Um, on this engine, it's quite easy. Uh, the engine is exposed, as you can see, in its own engine room, and it's easy to get round, almost all the way round. The front end is a bit more difficult, but there again, you don't want to be playing with that anyway because it's too heavy. Um, oil change on this one, she takes between one and two gallons of oil, um, between seven and ten litres. Uh, I always keep oil on board if I can and I always keep the old cans from when I've emptied or done any oil change previously. Um, down here you can see I've positioned an empty oil can um, just lifted this board and slid it in. I've got my filter going into the top of it and this spout here is the oil pump that I'm going to use a siphon. Um, you'll see in a minute. Now the engine's been running this morning so she's still warm. In fact she's at about 57 degrees. So the oil's still warm and easier for me to pump out. It's had time to drain down into the sump. Um, so what I'm going to do is pump the oil into that can, remove the oil filter housing here and put a new oil filter in there. Um, what I've also got to do whilst I've got this off is check all these linkages here for the oil pipes because I've got a, an oil leak and I've got to find out where it's coming from. There's a few places it can come from, but that's nothing to do with the oil change. That's just maintenance on the engine. Um, so, a simple job. Those of you that have got boats and uh, are a bit worried about doing an oil change because they do have to be done quite often. Um, you probably have seen these siphon pumps on the side of your engine. There you go, there's your oil coming out of the sump. Looks a bit thin, but as I say, it's, uh, it's hot. There's nothing wrong with doing an oil change yourself. You don't have to pay hundreds of pounds to get a mechanic in to do it. It's quite simple. As long as you can get hold of the correct filter, and some of them even have a screw-on cartridge, makes it even easier. Um, all you need is the, the, the cartridge, your new oil, somewhere to put your old oil as you pump it out. And uh, when you have pumped it out, you dispose of it properly. This one will be going down the tip because they've got a nice tank down there for recycling engine oil. Um, other things you have to be careful about is not over tightening the filter when you put it back on because then that gives you a leak and when you first start the engine up afterwards you won't have any oil pressure until the oil's come through and gone around the system again but you'll see all that later. Right as you can hear I'm coming to the I hope you can hear that it's not me it's um, it's losing suction from the sump. Uh, at this point, you can leave it another couple of minutes, and, uh, and then just for that last bit of drain down in, so you can get some more. Some of these I've noticed on some of the engines that people have asked me to show them how to do this. They have a an Allen. It was on the Shire engines, I think. There's a little Allen bolt inside the discharge tube from the pump. So make sure you take, just check there's nothing there stopping it when you uh, go to start pumping. You'll soon know if there's something in there because you won't be able to lift or push that down anymore. It'll, it'll um, lock up the pressure of the fluid. And also don't do this too fast either, I've got a spit all over the place. This yeah. is where I've got these 
puppy pads. Puppy pads, good old puppy pads. <laughs> and if you look, it's, it's collecting on the bottom down there. So. Yeah, I've got some in the bottom because, I, as I say, I've got a... Well, I keep them in there all the time, actually. But because I've got a slight oil leak on here somewhere, and I haven't found a little swine yet, um, I keep them in there to keep the bilge clean. We have two. We have two apprentice uh, mechanics here watching eagerly on the side here. Oh, I thought they were there to mop up the oil. <laughs> the right that's colour. Isla, and that's Molly, the tiller girls there watching, taking it all in. Right, while that's draining down into the sump, and I've made a mess here as well because me. Um, <laughs> here's me trying to stop it up here and I've made a mess down at the bottom because my funnel moves slightly away from the top of the can it's just well I did have them puppy pads down in there right while I'm waiting for the last bits to drain down into the sump I'm going to take this filter housing off take the filter out so you can see what's in there I've got a Tupperware dish there, if this works properly, just to see, you can see it leaking out now down the side, so it, it is messy job on this one. It's sliding all over the place. But you get me drift. Central screw goes up into this housing all the way up to here. It tightens this up, and you've got to release that. I think I might have to just make a mess. I think this is what puts a lot of people off. The dirty oil, that's why I'm wearing gloves. I can't remember it being this dirty last time. Still. What I'm going to try and do when I get this out, the excess oil is in this canister that I'm unscrewing. It's going to go in there. And drain into the can. Right, here we go. That's released. Drain the excess oil. There's the old film cut sliding out. That can come into here. Do his business in there. There's rubber seals in here as well, so you have to remember where to put those. New ones come with the new filter. Just drain all this out. Turn the kitchen roll to the kitchen. <laughs> no, no, I'm not that silly. <laughs> yeah. I know what you've been up to. Making your kitchen roll. <laughs> the idea is to get all of this spotless when the new oil goes in. You don't want to contaminate the new oil with uh, any debris which it can get stuck down, sucked up by the engine and stuck inside. That just wears the engine quicker. Now I've got one, more than one pair of gloves. In fact one of the boaters this morning by us come and pinch some off me yesterday because they were doing the exact same job as this. This 
sat on top of my very useful handy black bag over there for putting all the bits in so I can just lock these in the corner. Well, I'll get open here and I'll open it for you. Russell, Russell, Russell. No, he's here. <laughs> yeah. Russell Newbury. So those of you who've just joined us, this is a Russell Newbury. And how old is she? Uh, same age as the boat. It's built for the boat. Um, up by Rugby. That's where the factory is. You can still get them. Made to order. And if you want one, it'll cost you north of 20,000 quid. Which is... Uh, what a not, money. not a small amount of money. I did ask him when I went up to get the, um, my first lot of filters when we got the boat. I went up and saw the, the chap that owned it at the time. I think it's changed hands now. Um, I asked him how much the new engine was. And he said, oh, £20,000 I can do that for. And I just said, oh, just the filters then, please. But she's done 13... 13,800 hours on this engine since new. It's 31 years old, same as the bow. And um, looked after properly, they go on for years and years. They used to use them, I believe, in the mines. Is it diamond mines in South Africa? Yeah. For pumping water. And they used to run 24-7 pumping the water out of the mines. Design's been around for. Did it have a different name once upon a time? I think they were called Nationals um, before they were Russian Newbury. It's a tw twin cylinder. And it's a bit um, dirty. The, the brass work hasn't been polished up lately. I don't know what's wrong with uh, the galley slave, but it's, oh been, it's been July devil. since she's been down here polishing yeah, the brass. Cheeky devil. Silver's, Norm, Norman, silver's yeah. my uh, my uh, well, metal it looks like I work gold, with. Isn't it? mm. It's not gold, it's brass. I know it's brass. You did a bit of a modification to it though, didn't you? If anybody yeah. could notice. Oh, we've got on the air filter. Which is this yeah. part here. Uh, it was rattling against um, the injector pipe here from the fuel pump, from the injector pump. And it was tap, 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 tap on the, all the time. When it's still on the back, all I can hear is it's tapping. And I, I don't like that. Because that will eventually wear through that injector pipe. So I thought, well, that isn't, I don't think that's the, well, it definitely isn't the original. The ones that I've I've seen are totally different to that on, a, on other Russell Newbury's. Um, that, that was an add-on. All it is is a piece of flat brass and bent in a circle, brazed up, and the end brazed on as well. Yeah, if you look around the other side of the air filter, you'll see the actual, that's the air filter housing, and the air filter's inside. Well, when we got the boat, this housing was probably another two, two and a half inches longer. What's that? That's about another 60 mil was on here. So what I've done is, I've cut the end off here to shorten it. It's still slightly longer than the actual filter itself. And I've put, um, trying to think how many holes I've drilled. Oh, it's quite a few. 225, there. something like that? Yeah, something like that. I think. I, had to, I sat on the back doing it one day. Um, and there's a better airflow going in now. There wasn't enough air really getting into the engine. So, uh, and it stopped the knocking on the side. All these linkages here, this one, is for the throttle comes across over to the bar that goes down on the on the governor and as I wind the wheel on the back of the boat you may have seen pulls all these levers and uh, increases the revs it's not as e easy to control one of these boats as uh, speed wise of the engine as it is on, on the old Morse controls which this boat was fitted with first of all you see the um, standing for it is out the back there mm, still there it's one of the things still we will there. remove one day yeah I've, I've removed most of it but, um, um, and the other control coming down this way is for the gears backwards and forwards and the idea is on the old boats is you wind 
the throttle down, which imitates the pulling back of the Morse control on the other boats. Um, then you can change, put it into neutral and change gear into, into reverse. On this boat, although you shouldn't do it, the gearbox is strong enough because this, this engine, believe it or not, although it's 2.6 litre, is only um, 18 horsepower and she revs at a maximum of a thousand revs. And that would pile the boat along at about four miles an hour on the canals. But there again, that's the speed limit anyway. And tick over past other boats. Um, yeah, this that lever comes down and, and operates. That lever there on the gearbox, which is just forwards and backs, is in neutral at the moment. And the engine's turned off whilst I do this. I'm the only person that works on this engine, so. It's only because he hasn't trained me yet. Yeah. Do you want it? Do you want to do it? <laughs> Can't do both. Got another pair of gloves for you. Just turn them inside out, so those dirty ones in there. Anyway, that's the plan, is that he is going to um, train me on this engine. I've told you how to start it and stop it, Yeah. but you haven't continued and done it. This, When you stop this engine, um, if I do it from the pull lever stop at the back, the belt for the water pump over there, as, as she slows right down, the compression in the engine just throws the engine back and that's uh, you don't want that so I use the decompression lever as as I stop it from down here there's a lever there you can pull out cuts the fuel off old saying it makes a mess is the one that cleans it up I'd, I, I had everything laid out so I didn't make a mess so it would be nice and posh for you YouTube viewers and what do I go and do Make Miss a the, mess. Misses the can. <laughs> and, and for Sean on Foxes Afloat, can you put some bacon rolls on because the stokers are bilge diving again. Cheers. For all those who don't know, Sean was ex-Navy as well. And I believe you were the same... Uh... He was the chef at my training base when I went through training. Mm. He was so, only a, a wee youngster. So that was a very... Not baby faced. Yeah, it's a very small world. It is, yeah. I knew when I saw my quick. Oh, I know that face. I, re I know that face. Where from? Where from? Couldn't work it out. And then we discussed online a couple of months ago and found out. When somebody um, mentioned that he was ex-Navy, I asked him what ships he's at, you know. And because uh, that's, that's how we do it. Oh, what ships are you at? And then we found out that um, he joined up about six months before me in 1980. So he says. And. Uh, right, tell everybody what oil you're using there for our boat. Well, this is black, messy stuff. <laughs> it comes out of an engine. And runs on the puppy pads. And goes on the puppy pads and hopefully not on my slippers. Don't stand there, you... Oh, never mind, they were almost ready for the bin anyway. I've got a new pair. <laughs> in their build, in his slippers. <laughs> Soakers don't normally do that. No. No, I can vouch for that, for cleaning the I'm mess up me, afterwards. I've got my boots on. When he comes home at night with oh, his overalls and diesel. stinking of diesel, oh, days are long gone. gone. That seems like yesterday, but I, do you know that was 17 years ago I left that. I know, I know. Doesn't time fly when you're enjoying yourself? I, don't, I wouldn't know. Um, oh, I have just got to show you know, this down I have never made such I've a mess. I've just got to be a bit careful what I touch because I don't know what's hot and what's not in this boat. So it should be alright lean against that. Alright, okay. So I'm going to look at his feet. I've, I mean, I've, look at I his made feet. It, I have, this is where I store all my empty cans. He loves being so, in the boat, as you recall from the last one of the videos we've just recently done. But yes. This is the worst this bilge has ever been. I'm not doing another video. So he's going to, when he comes out of here, he's going to take his slippers off. Put me new ones on! And before he walks out of here, because the next room is our bedroom. 
or behind him is the, the uh, boatman's cabin. So he's not going either way until he puts his new... <laughs> put some... I can get some more in there, yeah. Right, so onward with the... Yeah, on the while, whilst you've been away, or should I say, whilst man has been making me coffee, I've, um, using a spanner I don't like using, but in the Navy you use them quite a bit, I thought it was 22 millimetres. I'm just going to move one of the socks. because I'm there, but it's not, it's about 22. Getting a bit close here, so we we'll just get here. When the oil drains back down to the sump, there's a pipe, and... These connections on the top, I, I managed to get a, a little bit of a turn on it. I'm going to see if I can get down to the. I've got hiccups now. That's not my coffee. Ah, there we can, are. Better line. See if Sorry, I can God. get anything on this one. As I say, it's difficult because it's it's a swine to get to. A little bit. Right, that should do that. I'm trying to mop all this up so I can see where the oil's coming from after I've started the engine up for a bit. There's some more pipes down here. What I really want to do is get down underneath the engine and, and get in there and turn it all up. But there's not a lot of room and I'll have to take the prop shaft off here. That prop shaft is a bit bigger than normal boats. If you've got an engine like this, you've probably got one this size. Um, it does go down to a smaller one. All those that saw the vlog on um, doing the stern tube, you'll see the actual shaft as it goes out through the hull is a lot thinner. This is more like a, a lorry um, prop shaft. Anyway, I digress. I keep doing that. I'm in the element, you see. Um, Right, I've got to get that can back in there and, and just see if there's any more oil in the sump whilst uh, we take a little bit of a break from filming and I get things back to normal. As you can see I don't make a mess whatsoever. <laughs> I've uh, cleaned up the mess I made and I'm just finishing off. I'm going to get the last remnants out of the sump. Mind you, even when you're doing a car, you can't get all of it out of the sump when you're draining it. Even up on the ramps, there's always a little bit left in there to mix with the new oil. Which is a shame, but there you go. I don't think we're going to get a lot more out of that. I'm thinking of. Is it OCD when you like polishing? Oh yeah. You like everything just as it is? Yeah, I'm afraid it's guilty of that. That was my job. Well, this is disgusting, Mandy. Why haven't you been down here? Oh, shut up. Look at all this brass, all this polishing. I've been entertaining the troops, doing other things. I can't really say a lot because, well, maybe I can. The other, the other month ago, maybe six weeks, two plates on the side of the engine round here. You can see the round ones on that side. <laughs> nice and polished brass. Well on this side it would just look like tarnished steel. <laughs> so I thought well I'll give them a clean up and give them a paint because I have got some green paint somewhere. But as you can see now they're not. Hang on this is I've got to do a bit of a bit of a uh, <laughs> and uh, I've, I've polished them up as well these two here. And I thought, oh great, they are brass. So I thought, I'll do those as well. Yeah, wrong. That's the water jacket there. You undo those and you get coolant coming out. So um, I'm going to have to do that in situ when I go around to it when the engine's cold. Being a bit eager, I think, is the word. Hey, you were trying to show off. Yeah, I wasn't showing off. I just That's why I didn't clean them. Clean as, yeah, of course it is. <laughs> anyway, it's your engine. It was our engine. Yeah, it's only our engine when you want me to polish it. <laughs> Good enough reason. 
But this part of the boat, we will actually, we did say one time we would do a, a walk through a walk the boat. Through. We, we, have, we have many, it. two years. Two years. But um, this end of the boat is all tradition. It's castles um, yeah, it and roses. And the rest of the boat was um, refitted. 2011-ish? I think so. I think um, Will, if he's watching, can... Uh, yes, this end wasn't touched and the be... I would open those doors for you, but I've got tools, I've got... No, 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 oh, not I've yet. got stuff ready to pull out. So I'm not, <laughs> not going to open those, because <laughs> no. I've moved it all out of here, out of the storage, so I can get around the engine. Yeah. It's not always this, this clear. It should be, but it's not. No. It is right. a working space, it's not well, a cut this down space. Because we've been doing this for hours now. Um, I've got out just about as much as I can out of there. The old filter's off and draining in there. Uh, I'll tip that oil into that can afterwards. I've given this a wipe out. I will give it a little bit more. It's been draining there for a little bit. Not a lot left in it. Tighten up the two bolts there that I can get to, which I wanted to do. This is where I find out I've got the wrong filter. Better not. Have. done is taking the old seal out from underneath here, renew them every time. That's the oil filter housing. <clears throat> underneath there is a seal, which is that one there. Um, bit of a swine to get out. All I've done is put a flat ended screwdriver up at the side and flicked it out. What I'm going to do now, this is clean oil ready to go in the engine. Let's go a bit on my finger, rub it round so you get a nice seal against the seal when you put the new one in. Put the top back on that because the way things are going today I'll knock it over. Right, new filter, comes with a new seal, there's one there, but there's different sizes. Ours is the thinner one as you can see over there. That's quite a thick one and won't fit that housing over there, it's too thick. I'll keep those, so I've got a bag in there of all different sizes for other people if they need them. Right, new oil filter. Um, I got this one from a, a car parts place in Devizes because I was there at the time and I used my last filter doing somebody else's boat, which had the same filters as we did. So new oil filter in there, right inside up, and this face, that face there, is the bit that seals up against that seal in the groove, and it, it creates a, an oil tight seal. So, first things first, always get yourself comfortable. seal doesn't drop out and as you get closer this is spring loaded the reason it's spring loaded is if your oil filter blocks if you got to if you haven't changed it for a long time and you've got a load of carbon in the oil it will eventually block the oil filter and the spring is there as a relief valve the pressure of the oil will push the um, oil filter out the way and let the oil still circulate. It stops the engine from seizing. 
try not to go over your maximum hours. Just make sure that goes in the, in the groove. Get the spanner. Didn't have to be over tight. You feel the pressure come on and just a little bit more. Right, that should have sealed on that new seal that's up in there. What I'm going to do now is top the engine up with enough oil up to the top mark with clean new oil. Then I'll start the engine, make sure I'm getting oil pressure because uh, he won't first of all because he's got to top all this up with oil. Um, get oil pressure up, quick check for leaks and then turn the engine off, let it drain down and then re-top it with oil because obviously you've used some throughout the system to top up the fill and things like that so the level will drop. It's the same as they would do in a garage when you're doing it. Or they, they may have a measured um, dispenser to show how much they put in. And if it says the engine takes six and a half litres, that's how much they put in. And then it'll level itself out when they start the engine up. Um, personally, myself, I'd rather check it afterwards and just final check. Most engines have an oil filter, uh, oil filler on the top here. This one's different. The oil comes in the side of the engine. I have to take that brass nut off of there, and then there's a little washer, spacer, and then my brass cover. Give that a quick wipe. There's no, no seal there. I don't know whether it's supposed to have a paper seal there or not, but there's no seal there at the moment. And as you see, I have got a very slight oil leak on the bottom of the cylinder heads which for the engine, this engine doing this amount of hours is quite normal because he's ready for new cylinder head gaskets at some point. Right, there's my dipstick, take him out, give my wipe. See, lower and higher levels. I'm now going to top it up until we're up to the higher level. Put all this back on, dipstick in, start the engine up, make sure I get an oil pressure and then I'll check it all again later and put a bit more. So that's one, two. This one's only about half a can, so that's what I've been using to top it up. There's no sump plug to worry about on these, because that's where that siphon fits in so I know it's not going to drain out the bottom it's an expensive round down the pub doing this on an engine these are about 25-30 quid a gallon I could be quite tight. I'll drain what's left in that into another can in a minute. The top and up. The last remnant, so make sure I don't spill this now. There's another coarse filter just down in there. It's like a plate with a load of holes in where it drains down into the crankcase of the engine. Let's give that a minute to drain down a bit. See how much we've got to so far. As you can see, he's gone dirty already because he's mixing with the remnants of the old oil that's in the sump. 
As you can see from that, I've still got quite a bit to go. I wouldn't be surprised if it takes all of this. I should know in my head what this sump takes, but for the life of me, I can't recall it, so I shall have to get the book out and have a look. This one here is a fuel filter. I'll do that on a different day. There's two on this boat. You've got a, a steel one here which you can wash out and clean diesel. Give it a rinse out and a paper element one in there. Same as the, it's not the same size but it's the same um, job to do changing that fuel filter. quite lucky on this but we don't have a with the position of the fuel tank we don't um, have a lot of problems with condensation and, and diesel bug and things like that with water inside it so um, the tank's quite clean what's it reading bosun huh a little bit to go there I was looking for food again. None in here, mate. So she's about about a gallon and a half as takes. So what's that? Um, Twelve pints or a gallon and a half? So Four point five. Come on, brain work. Seven, eight, eight litres of oil. So you got to buy two cans. And you use the rest for topping up throughout the next 250 to 500 hours. Right, we're just below the high level there, so. That'll do for now. That's normally polished. Oh, don't keep on. To be fair, Amanda's only done the engine once. She did a better job than I normally do. But it's normally me that polishes the engine. So I shouldn't complain, really. No, you but shouldn't. she made such a good job last time. I, I feel inadequate when I see the polishing that you do. Yeah. Any excuse. This can this is normally my escape. If I can it's not a story time. It's my escape <laughs> for one bit of quiet, come down and polish something. Hasn't happened a lot lately. Right. You're not gonna like this bit Isla, so you best go out. People shouting at me now. It's got some. Um, there's some UV engines. So you don't start it up using a decompression lever.
Right, oil pressure came up. There's no leaks around by the filter, so she's okay. Let that drain down, and I'll take that cover off and just finally top up with oil. And that's an oil change done. It seems to have taken ages. It doesn't normally take me that long. And I don't normally make that much mess. But it is what it is. Um, hope that's helped you. I know this engine is different to the one you may have on your narrowboat um, or boat. But it's a simple operation. You drain the oil out. You take the oil filter off. You clean it all up. New oil filter on. Top it up with oil. Test run, get an oil pressure, shut it down, let it all drain down and bring it back up to its proper running level. And that's your oil change. It's not exp it's not hard to do, it's quite simple. Um, and you don't have to pay out hundreds for somebody to come and do it. I mean, that, some of these people are charging 70 quid an hour, or even more. And I'm certainly not going to pay that. Well, not unless I really have to. Right. I hope that helped. Um, I'll finish off and clean this up. Don't you worry yourself. And uh, top the engine up. Thanks for watching. Uh, just something I did forget, so I'll just throw this in. Um, for those of you that haven't got the cartridge or oil filter assembly like this, um, where you've got the paper element inside, you will have a screw on canister. It might be up that way, on the engine that way. Normally that way. So when you un unscrew them, all the oil drains down the side of the engine. Anyway, to get them loose, first of all, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Um, there's two tools I've got here. This is a chain wrench that fits around the filter. I've put it on upside down. So anyway, and you just hook that in there, and you and. Sorry. Let me do it the right way. Right. Put the chain around the filter, hook it on, and as you put pressure on there, it unscrews it. Lefty loosey, righty tighty. Um, I'm not going to do it on this because this I've got a screw fed on. The other one I've got, I got this one because I did a person's boat and Try as we might, we could not get the old filter off. It was so tight, whoever put it on there must have been Arnie Schwarzenegger. This type are quite good. You can get this from any motor factor or... Um, What's that called then? It's, it's just a, an oil... Um, you got me now, haven't you? <laughs> Why do people want to know? An oil filter spanner. Right, so that all that does is it's adjustable. So you put it round. If that's not quite tight enough, you can tighten it up so you can get some more grip. And you can get quite a bit of grip on that. Try not to pierce the outside of the canister you're undoing, and then you would just undo that again. It's got teeth on it, but if you press too hard, it will. It makes an indent in because it's made of thin aluminium, um, and then you can unscrew it. If you do put a hole through it, I've seen some people just put a screwdriver straight through the old canister and try and loosen it off that way. Yeah, it does the job, but you get oil everywhere as you try to unscrew it. It just goes everywhere. Um, they're about £15 each, I suppose. I couldn't. The reason I bought that is because I, I had a job getting in. It was a Shire engine. I had a job getting in to get it undone. It was where it was on the side of the engine, the stanchion that came out on the side of the engine. I just couldn't get in there, so I bought that one. Just thought I'd add that in there on how to get the other filters off. That's it.